Hi guys! Today we're going to be talking about the 11 major body systems that make up, or sorry, organ systems, either way, that make up your body. To help you understand or see some of these, I pulled some pictures from one of my favorite things in the world, which is called the, called the Body World Exhibit. If you have not had a chance to go see that, uh, next time it's around, I'll make sure to let you know. It's really amazing. They take, uh, this doctor takes bodies and plastinates them, which is basically turns all the tissue into plastic and then shows off all the different body systems quite well. There is one in Buena Park right now, just for a little bit, called Body Exhibitions, I think, which is not the same company, not the same guy, but is still pretty darn cool to look at as well. So, uh, sorry if some of these pictures gross you out, but I thought they were pretty darn cool. Okay, let's go ahead and start with the first of the 11 major body systems that make up your body. First one we have uh, is the integumentary system, also known as the integument. It's a fancy name for your skin. Now you'll notice I have two things over here, the function of the body system and the major organs that you find in the body system. Now, of course, as we go through each of the systems in, during the school year, we're gonna be spending way more time and way more information on each of these. So all I require you to know is the basic function and the basic, you know, name a couple of the organs out of there. So that way you can just match them up and go, yeah, that goes with that. So the function of the integumentary system well, first let's take a look at the organs. It's your skin. So over here, this guy right here is holding his own skin. You can see there's a foot, and there's a hand, and there's the head. So he's holding his own skin. Your skin is very, very important because it contains many glands, like sweat and sebaceous glands. If you're especially oily up here on your nose or on your chin, you can thank sebaceous glands for that. It also creates hair and nails. So, kind of important for us. Girls like to do up their nails. Uh, the function of the skin and the glands and the hair and the nails, the main one, the number one thing is protection. It protects us, like I said on the previous little video, was that it protects us from all those bacteria that are constantly trying to get inside of our body at all time. It also protects uh, us from sun damage, unless you spend too much time in the sun and then your skin itself gets damaged. It also makes vitamin D which is uh, kind of essential for certain functions of your body. So getting some fresh sun every single day is good. It helps you maintain the amount of vitamin D needed. And it's also responsible for sensation. How would you know what's going on in the world if you couldn't feel? Um, there are certain sicknesses or illnesses where there's no pain receptors in your skin, and so they can't feel the heat, um, pain, so they could step right on a nail and be like, what, what, what happened? I have no idea put their hand uh, or pick up a hot pot with their bare hand and they wouldn't feel anything. Now it doesn't mean they're invincible, they still would get burns and injuries and things like that, they just don't feel it. So sensation is amazing because it, it's our warning system. It says, hey, danger's nearby, stop doing what you're doing, and uh, helps to prevent injury. So it's kind of an important thing. So the main thing, protection, I'd say second one, sensation, because it helps keep us out of danger. Okay, the second system that we're going to take a look at is the skeletal system. Obviously, bones should be found in the skeletal system, but another one that's equally as important is the bone marrow. If you were to cut a bone in half and look at it, you have the solid outer portion where the compact bone is, and then you have a squishy little middle inside which is called the marrow. Now for some of you guys, when you eat ham and you get the ham bone, some of you like to suck out the middle or use it to make soup and stuff. That totally grosses me out, but I hear that's supposed to be really tasty. So that's the marrow. And the marrow's function, which is kind of interesting, is to form blood. So you, most of the blood in your body is created in your bones. Um, the sternum is one that makes a lot of blood. Your hip bones and your femur bones also help to make a lot and lots of blood. Now other bones do it as well, but the majority of blood production comes from those. The function of your skeletal system is to protect your body organs. That's why all the good stuff is in the middle. So your heart and your lungs and your diaphragm and your liver and your stomach, you know, all the really important things, oh yeah, and your brain too, that's kind of important, 
are all protected in this nice big bony layer. So protection is a big one. It also supports the organs. It kind of holds them in place. It also, like we said, support or produces blood. And then another one, which is uh, quite obvious, it allows for movement because each bone has a muscle that pulls on it. And so when the muscle shortens and gets a little smaller, it pulls on the bone, which causes it to you know, move in that direction. Sorry, that's not the best picture. So your bones just kind of act like little levers for the muscles to pull on, and that's what causes movement. So for every bone in your body, you have a muscle on one side and an opposite muscle on the other. So that way your bone can go in both directions. Now, if you were to, say, not have function of one side of the muscle, well, then you would not be able to do the opposite action. So for example, you have a bicep and a tricep. The bicep causes your arm to go this way. The tricep makes it go that way. So if I was working out you know, real hard like I always do, and all of a sudden my bicep broke. I'm, I've known someone who this happened to, and the muscle just went shweet and shrunk all the way up here. He would not have the ability to do this anymore because there's nothing to pull on that muscle in order to bring it up. And so they have to surgically repair it, hold it safe for a little while, and then it could start doing it again. But there is no possible way to lift the arm if this muscle were to rip or tear. So we kind of need our bones so we can move around. Okay, the next item, oh, my pen stopped working. Hold on. My tablet's not cooperating with me today. Turn on. There we go. Okay. Then the next system, which kind of goes hand in hand with the skeletal system, would be the muscular system. The muscles, the organs that we find there, obviously are muscles, but there's three kinds of muscles. We have the skeletal muscles, which as it sounds, are the ones that attach to the skeleton that allow for movement. These are the ones that you typically see through the people's skin. So when you work out and you go, ooh, that's muscles, those are your skeletal muscles. We have smooth muscles, which you don't see because they are what make up your esophagus and your small and your large intestine. They move very slowly and um, very controlled, and that's what pushes food down through your intestinal system. And then we have cardiac muscle, and if you know the root for cardia, that means heart. So the only place you're going to find this muscle is right here in your heart, which is kind of like right there. Okay, so there's three of your systems. Let's go on to number four. The fourth system is the lymphatic system. Um, I put slash immune system because the lymphatic is what's responsible for keeping you healthy. So I kind of put immune to go with it. The organs that you find in the lymphatic system are your thymus. Your thymus is, if this is your heart, is a little gland that sits right on top. Your spleen, which is right over here. If you've ever seen the movie Mystery Men, um, you know who the spleen is? It's funny, you need to go watch that movie. Lymph vessels, which are all these little green guys inside, and lymph nodes, which are, the, you can see there's like little bulbs of them. Those are the lymph nodes. Now the main job of the lymphatic system is to recycle fluid. Your body is constantly losing fluid uh, called lymph. And so your blood vessels, your arteries and your veins are leaky. And so the fluid leaks out of those. Well, if they couldn't get collected and put back in, you would get swelling or what they call edema. And then your legs would start to swell, your arms would start to swell, fingers and so on. So it's up to your lymphatic system to return the fluid back where it belongs. Um, another thing it does is to attack germs. Like I said, it's part of your immune system. <clears throat> so its job is to seek and destroy and produce antibodies and cells that will help to keep you healthy. Okay, the next system is your respiratory system, number five. The organs of the respiratory system include your lungs down here. That's a smoker's lung. That's a nice little happy, healthy lung. I also would want to point out the size of the heart on there. Look how much bigger the heart is on there than there. Doesn't mean it's stronger. It's actually thinner, just bigger, because it has to pump harder. Don't smoke. Don't inhale things. That's bad for you. This is what your lungs are going to look like. Chunky. Gross. Uh, also, your trachea, which is a little tube that pops up out of here. And also your mouth 
and your nostrils. They're all involved in the respiratory system. And the main job of them is to get oxygen in and CO2 out. That is pretty much their only job. Breathe in, suck as much oxygen out as you can, put CO2 in your lungs and breathe it out, repeat. That's pretty much his only job. Okay, the next system is called the digestive system. Um, the things, the organs that we find in there, and here it is over here, we have an esophagus, which is this little tube. You have your stomach, you have all 30 feet of your small intestine, there's some right there. And then don't forget your large intestine right around there. So all together about 30 to 40 feet, depending on how tall you are. Um, there's also accessory organs like your liver, but we'll talk about those later. The main point of the digestive system is to take the hamburger that you ate, break it down into proteins, carbs, and nucleic acids and lipids, and then your body can now use it to rearrange and to build other structures from it. So you're up. Oh, I lost my pen again. Gosh dang it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm going to cheat for a second. <clears throat> okay, so your digestive system get the food, eat the food, break down the food, and use it to build new stuff. Okay, number seven is your nervous system. So here's your nervous system all taken out of your body. The organs that we find here are your brain, your spinal cord, which is this big thing, here, and then all the nerves that go with it. Your nerves go in two directions, to the brain and away from the brain. Um, let's see, the nervous system, the job, the function of it is to control all the functions of the body. It is, think of like your computer, it's all the circuitry inside of your computer, it's all the wires and the electronics. So your brain is responsible for coordinating all 11 systems and making sure that they're working right. So if one system isn't working correctly, it'll send a message up to your brain, your brain will respond by trying to make that system work correctly afterwards. Okay, number eight, the endocrine system. We don't really think of this one very often because they're not big fat organs, but we have things like the thyroid, uh, which is in your throat right here. The thymus, which I said earlier was on top of your heart. Your pancreas, which you don't even know of usually unless you have diabetes and then you're quite aware of your pancreas. Adrenal glands, which you're aware of when you go on really fast roller coasters ovaries and testes, which are involved in reproduction, and your pituitary gland, which we can see right there in the cross section of this poor gentleman right here. And uh, I'm sorry, you got the hypothalamus and the pituitary, you got both of them in there. And their job is to produce hormones. Now usually you think, especially teenagers, hormones are only there for to make the uh, uh, someone more attractive to you and the desire to uh, get to know them better. Um, but Everything, all biological processes in your body are controlled by hormones. The fact that you get hungry is controlled by hormones. The fact that you get tired is controlled by hormones. So it's not just a boy girl, ooh, I like you kind of thing. Uh, every single thing in your body is controlled by hormones. Now if you notice, we also said the nervous system does the same thing. That's because the nervous system and the endocrine system are, they're like this, they're buds, they're best buds. and so. Actually, part of the hypothalamus, part of it is nervous tissue. The other part is endocrine tissue. So he's kind of both. He, he goes uh, uh, for both systems. So the endocrine system is very, very important to maintaining um, your levels of metabolism, levels of sugar in your blood, everything. So he's, he's pretty important, even though we don't really know about him. We got cardiovascular. Uh, the organs in this one include your heart right there and all the arteries, the veins, and capillaries that are attached to it. This is a picture of a heart where all the cells have been removed. The only thing that remains are the major arteries that feed the blood. So you can see your coronary artery right here. Your heart is a big muscle which needs to be fed, and so all these little vessels right here are feeding the heart. This big old fat thing right there is the aorta, and then these are the things that send blood to either your head or down to uh, either arms. So these guys are the highway system of your body. They take the blood and deliver it to every last cell in your body who needs nutrients and oxygen. It also picks up all the bad stuff. It picks up the carbon dioxide, all the bad stuff and any waste materials like ammonia that might be toxic to the body and deliver it back to the lungs or the kidneys so that way it can be removed from the body. 
All right, two more. We got the urinary system, which involve kidneys. And so these are showing both the artery, so we can see blood going in and then goes inside here. And then here's the bad blood coming out and then goes back up to the heart there. That's the inferior vena cava. So the organs of the urinary system include your bladder, your ureters, your urethra, and I said bladder again. Uh, I wonder what I meant. I don't know. All right, so the point of the urinary system is to get off, to get out of your blood all the bad stuff. Um, so like we had mentioned previously, uh, ammonia, NH3 is bad. It's bad for you. It's toxic and cause all sorts of problems. We need to get it out. And so your kidneys have the important job of sucking all that stuff out and then sending it down the ureters to the bladder where it then goes out of the body through the urethra. It also helps to maintain water balance. You guys know that if you drink too much water, what happens? You have to pee more. And if you don't drink enough water, what happens? You get thirsty. So your body, your kidneys can talk to your brain to tell you when to pee more and when to be thirsty. And the last one is the reproductive system. And if you've had health already, which I'm sure you have, then hopefully we can get through this section without all the giggling and the laughing. So I want you to do this with me now. I want you to say these words out loud and just scream them at the top of your voice. Make your mom come in and wonder what you're doing. I want you to say testes, testes, ovaries, ovaries, uterus, that one's not that bad, breasts, and ready for the good ones. Say the word penis, penis, and vagina. Okay, these are all my neighbors, if they can hear me, they're probably wondering what I'm doing. These are the reproductive organs. There's nothing weird and funky about them. There's nothing weirder than a heart than say, or saying the word heart as opposed to saying the word penis. They're both just names for organs. So I hope when we get to the reproductive system that you can do so without laughing, okay? Let's be somewhat adult about this. The whole point of the reproductive system, don't say to have fun, it is to produce offspring. Right there, I don't know if you can tell, this little blob right there, that is the placenta. And then you can see there's the butt and the leg and the baby's upside down that maybe could be a foot right there. And so there's a little baby inside of her. So all these things are used for the reproduction and procreation of the species. Some of them, like the penis, is also used in the urinary system to excrete fluids. Uh, but for the most part, they're all used in creating babies or creating secondary sexual characteristics like for males, facial hair, wider shoulders for females, enlarging breasts, wider hips, and the such. All right, so are we done giggling now? Okay, good. All right, so those are the 11 systems. You should be able to pick out some major organs that fall in each one and also what the main purpose of them are. So you're more than welcome to go back and watch this as many times as you want. Hit pause, restart as much as you want, um, and just or just look at the pictures because they're kind of cool. If you want to see more of this type of artwork, uh, go to Google Images and type in Body Worlds Exhibit. And you could probably spend the next hour looking at all the cool stuff. He also does animals, like um, he's done elephants and camels and horses and really neat stuff. So I think you might enjoy that. All right. Hope you enjoyed this, and I will speak to you guys tomorrow. Bye.